This video corresponds with the second lesson of Unit 4A. This video will review and teach you how to factor trinomials in which the coefficient in front of the x squared term is greater than 1. So, in the previous lesson, you learned how to factor trinomials in which the coefficient in front of the x squared was 1, and that was mostly just guess and check, multiply to C, add to B, figure out your two numbers. Well, you can use guess and check to factor these types of trinomials where you have twos and threes and sevens and all kinds of stuff in the front. However, guessing and checking may take a little bit longer because there's an extra piece involved, that A value, that value in front of the X term. So this video will teach you how to factor these trinomials using what I call the diamond method, the X method, you can call it whatever you want here. So you notice I have these X's all over the place here. If you look at the top of the screen here, what you will notice is with this little organizer, and some of you may have done this in Algebra 1 in learning how to factor uh, the easier trinomials. What you're going to want to do to factor these apart, we're going to incorporate this along with the ability to factor by grouping. To figure out what numbers you need in order to factor these apart, we're going to fill in this organizer with two things. Number on the left is going to be the B value. On the right side, we are going to fill in the number that's the product of the A and the C values. Basically, this is, these are going to act as what we're going to try to multiply to, what we're going to try to add to, in order to figure out how do we break this apart so we can factor it. So let's take a look here at our first example. 5V squared minus 53V plus 30. So, we talked about this in the last video. First thing you want to check for before anything else is a GCF, because if there is a GCF, there's a chance this doesn't have to be as complicated uh, or as involved, if you will, to try to solve and factor these apart. You look at the expression, they don't all have a variable term to take out, they're not all divisible by 5 or any other number, so we have to go through this process here and use this diamond method. So, what we're going to do here is fill in the diamond with the two values. So again, the B value is that middle number, which is negative 53. The number on the right is the product of the A and the C values. So the A value is 5, the C value is 30. 5 times 30 is 150. Now, what we're going to fill in the top and the bottom numbers here, these are the two numbers that we're going to find that multiply to 150 and add to negative 53. So there is still some of that element that we talked about in the last lesson with regular trinomials uh, that have just the regular x squared. That's still that kind of that multiply to ac, a times c, and add to the b value. So there's a little bit more that we incorporate here. So these numbers will be sometimes a little bit bigger, so you might have to do a little bit more guess and check to figure these out. But in this case, what multiplies to 150 and adds to negative 53, negative 50, and negative 3. These two values we are going to use to rewrite our problem so that we can go ahead and factor it. So these two numbers are going to be our focal point. Okay. Now, when we rewrite this problem here, when we rewrite it using this diamond method, we're going to use the first term and the last term of the expression that's there. We're going to replace the middle term, the negative 53v, with the two numbers that we just found. Negative 50, we'll put a v with it, and negative 3, also putting a v with it. Now, hopefully you can see, negative 53v is the exact same thing as negative 50v minus 3v. It's the same thing, but rewritten a little bit differently, so we can go ahead and factor this apart. You'll notice we now have four terms. Now, do not make the mistake of just combining the like terms back together, because that just gets you back to where you started, and that's not super helpful at all. We have four terms. One strategy that you learned last year that we haven't referenced yet, last year in Algebra 1, that is, is how to factor by grouping. So this is a strategy that's used when you have four terms. To factor by grouping, we go ahead and break our expression into two groups. First two terms, we put in parentheses. Last two terms, we put in parentheses. From here, we are going to find the GCF of each group. If we do this correctly, what you'll see are some matching pieces. So let's go ahead and look at the first group here, 5v squared minus 50v. The GCF is 5v. Left over would be v minus 10. If we take the right GCF out of the second group, we'll get a matching piece of v minus 10. So... GCF of negative 3v and positive 30, I can take out a negative 3. 
that would leave me with v minus 10. Matching pieces means I have factored by grouping correctly. So to rewrite it, our two factors are going to be this, the common factor, which is v minus 10, and we put the GCFs that we pulled out together and make that a factor, 5v minus 3. And that's how we factor apart one of these type of problems, where you've got a trinomial, a greater than 1, so in this case the a value is 5, we make this little diamond, and we go ahead and break it apart, turn it into four terms, we factor it by grouping. So you'll see me use the same process here for these other three problems. So if you feel like you got an understanding of the first one, pause it, try the next one, see if your answer makes sense. But I'm going to go ahead and walk through the steps of the other three, so keep watching if you need that. So in our second example here, 3b squared plus 29b plus 18. So we have our three values, a, b, c. First thing I'm going to do is fill in my diamond. So... On the left, I'm going to put the b value, 29. On the right, I'm going to put the product of a times c. So 3 times 18, which is 54. So now, my goal is to figure out what multiplies to 54 and adds to 29. The two numbers that do that are 27 and 2. With these two numbers, I'm going to go ahead and replace the middle term, attaching a variable to each, and using our grouping strategy to figure out how we can break this apart. So once again, I'm going to pull down the two terms, the bookends, if you will, so the 3b squared and the 18. In the middle, I'm going to replace it with 27 and 2, making sure I attach b's, and since they're both positive, making sure we attach plus signs as well. So again, 27b and 2b, it's the same thing as 29b, just broken apart. Now we're going to go ahead and factor by grouping. So once again, I take each half of the problem, find the GCF of each half. So in the first half, I can take out a 3b, and I'm left over with b plus 9. Then we'll look at our second grouping here, taking out a GCF. So once again, we can take out a GCF of positive 2. Make sure to write the plus sign with it. When you do that, you'll have b plus 9 left over. Once again, matching pieces. So our two factors will be the common factor, b plus 9, and our GCFs will combine as a second factor, 3b plus 2. And voila, we have ourselves a factored expression. Taking a look now at the third example, same idea. So a, b, c. Our b term is going to go to the left side of the diamond, negative 5. The right side will be the product of a and c. 2 times negative 18 is negative 36. Make sure in problems where the C value or even maybe the A value, if they're negative, make sure that you account for that when you fill in this little X diamond, whatever you want to call it. If you don't, you might have a much harder time figuring out a pair of numbers that'll work. Make sure, again, account for negatives. I can't stress that enough. So, we need to figure out what multiplies to negative 36, adds to negative 5. Well, two numbers that'll do that in this case, 4, negative 9. So, I'm going to go ahead... And write down again my first term, my last term, and I'm going to put in the two terms to replace negative 5r. So I'll have positive 4r, negative 9r. Those will be my two terms to replace it. It means the same thing. And now I can go ahead and factor by grouping. First group, I can take out a 2r, and I'm left with r plus 2. Second group, I can take out a negative 9. Once again, that gives me r plus 2. My final solution, r plus 2, and then 2r minus 9 for my GCFs that I took out gives me my second factor, and I have myself a factored expression. Now, in the last problem, if you notice, there's something a little bit different about it. You'll notice in terms of the three terms, we, start, we have an x cubed, an x squared, and an x term. A little bit different than the other ones. So... Like I said in the beginning, you always want to check for a GCF in case you can make this simpler in yourself and so that you can factor it properly. If you look at this, you do have a GCF in common. There's no number you can divide out of all three terms, but you can take out an X. So if I take out an X from each term, everything's going to go down by a degree of 1. And I'm going to be left with X on the outside, 7X squared minus 37X plus 10. Pretty much the same problem, but we do need to factor the x out, so that way we can factor this properly using our diamond method. And again, good factoring strategies. We always want to look for a GCF, 
there was one in this case, so we take it out. So once again, I have my ABC. My B term is negative 37. That's what we're going to try to add to. We're going to multiply the A and the C, so 7 times 10. The goal is to multiply to 70. So two numbers that multiply to 70 add to negative 37. We're going to have negative 2 and negative 35. Now, when you write this out, especially since there was a GCF, you just need to be organized and be a little bit more detailed in how you write it out. So I'm going to do here, because I know I'm going to end up splitting this with parentheses, I'm going to put brackets around this entire gigantic four-term expression, just so I don't have double stacks of parentheses. You can certainly write it with double parentheses, but I think this will look a little bit cleaner. So once again, first term, last term. Replace the negative 37x with negative 2x, negative 35x. Again, focusing on what's inside the brackets here, I'm going to go ahead and split it apart. And I'm going to go ahead and figure stuff out from here. So once again, the x on the outside is going to carry through this whole problem. Because again, it is something that it is a factor. It is factored out. We carry it through the whole way. So looking at our two groups, though, our first group, we can take out an x, and we're left with 7x minus 2. In the second group, I can take out a negative 5, and I'm left with, once again, 7x minus 2. So, running out of space here, but our final answer is going to be this. The x that we pulled out, we have our common factor of 7x minus 2, and our GCF factor, x minus 5. That is your final answer to this problem. So a little bit different in that there was a GCF to pull out, but even with taking out the GCF, we still... So once again, we did have to take out a GCF to start. It does leave us still with our two normal factors, just like the other problems, but there is that extra X that we have to make sure is tacked on to our solution. So in short, that is how you factor trinomials apart especially when the A value is greater than 1. I highly recommend using this diamond, this X method, to factor these expressions apart. Again, you can use guess and check, similar to what you did in the previous lesson. I think that might be more work to try to figure out what terms are going to factor apart and figure out all those different things. So again, this would be my recommendation. It's a little bit lengthier, but it will work with all of these different type of problems.